So the Mach 4 was one of my favorite daily trainers, logging over 300 miles. So how does the Mach 6 compare? So welcome back to another video and as I said the Mac 4 was one of my favorite daily trainers over 300 miles in that shoe and now I have the Mac 6 really excited to dive in and share with you how I found it after the first run now I will share a little bit more information when we get to the section of the first impressions as to why it's just one run so far but there is just so much to talk about with this shoe that I wanted to get this video out there and share my initial thoughts with you guys quick disclaimer this is a pair of shoes that I bought with my own money no one sent me the pair of shoes this this is something that I have really, really wanted to try. So without further ado, let's dive in. We're gonna be talking today about how I tested it, give you guys a technical overview, and then dive in to my first impressions. So due to recent illnesses, I haven't been able to put as much testing in this shoe as I'd have liked. However, I have managed to get one easy run done last week, and I have basically not let this thing off my feet since. I've been walking around everywhere in it, and I have been absolutely loving this shoe. So we'll start off by saying I went true to size in this shoe, which is a UK size 13 in Hoka. When they get up to 20 12, it goes to 12 and a half, 13 and a half, 14 and a half, and it goes up in those half step increments. So for me, Hoka is always a 13 and a half and it fits perfectly. We're talking about a five millimeter heel to toe drop, 37 millimeters of stack height in the heel, 32 in the forefoot, and in my UK size 13, it comes in at quite a light weight, 297 grams or 10.4 ounces. Now let's start our way at the back of the shoe. We'll work our way from the heel counter, ankle collar, tongue, lacing, upper, midsole, and finish with the outsole. We have a Creel Jacquard mesh upper, which is just a posh word for a mesh upper, and it is very, very comfy indeed. And that runs all the way around the shoe. A few laminate overlays here and there with the logo uh, and, and the uh, logo there as well, but otherwise that runs front to back on the shoe. And we have quite a stout heel counter. It just does not move. The little heel flare here, that is flexible, um, but you can see where I bend it there, that's the top of the heel cup, and that runs from here, if you trace my finger all the way up there, around there, and back down the other side. Very standard, and again, it gives you a nice secure feeling in the heel counter. I'm a big fan of these heel flares. Lovely to get your foot in and out of the shoe. Very, very comfy as well. Perfect amount of padding uh, in and around the heel counter there, and under the ankle collar. Cut is lovely under there, and it sits just nicely. Everything is really good at this stage. The tongue is very, very thin indeed. We've got a paper thin tongue here. It does get a little bit of padding from basically the top of the laces down just to add a little bit of protection when you're cinching those laces down. But the top is very, very paper thin and that all adds to the very lightweight nature of this shoe. I will just say actually very quickly, this is a narrow shoe. So although my, fit foots, uh, my foot fits okay, uh, I will say that if you have a really, really wide foot, I'd say I have a wide foot, but not crazy wide, there is a wider option. You can get it and I would probably advise it. Mine fits snug in here. It's not uncomfortable in the slightest. My toes aren't bunched, but there's not really much wiggle room width wise. Uh, with that being said, if we move down to the lacing section, a pretty standard lacing system there. And we do indeed have the extra uh, loophole there for you guys to do the runner's knot. I just don't find I need to do that uh, because I get such a good lockdown in the shoe anyway. The tongue, as I didn't mention, is gusseted, meaning it's attached to the medial and lateral sides of the shoe with some elastic. So again, that all just adds to a lovely hugging sensation over the top of the foot. The upper feels lovely, very, very comfortable. Breathability, I'm not sure yet. We're not into those hot summer months. Um, and if water gets in there, I'm not sure about it getting out, all of that stuff. But so far, in terms of comfort levels, it is really, really good. There are some holes in the toe box, but it is like a dual layer mesh, I should say. And so they're kind of underneath that top layer. So how breathable it is, I just don't know yet. Time will tell. Let's move our attention to the midsole. It is the biggest change in the shoe. 
we have moved to a single layer of supercritical EVA. In version four that I had, and I believe in version five as well, I'm sure it was ProFly along the top, which is their sort of supercritical EVA. And then they had um, they had a normal EVA on the bottom with no rubber outsole, and that normal standard EVA on the bottom uh, acted as an outsole. Uh, and although that it sort of started to shed like snakeskin in the first 50 or 60 miles, after that, it held strong. And it was the first Hoka shoe that I managed to get over 300 miles in so that was really good however this time we have gone away from that dual density midsole and moved to one slab of supercritical eva this is absolutely stunning perfect blend between soft and firm it sits right in the middle there wonderful responsiveness and there is a very gentle rocket at the end you notice it because i've been walking in this shoe so much lately over the last few days you really notice this rocker at the end when you're walking and it's just enough to really help you through your gait cycle but it's not too much where it feels too aggressive it is absolutely spot on i'm a big fan of this midsole as we know hoka's eva's durability time will tell and then we move on to the outsole we have some rubber outsole the first edition uh, we haven't seen sorry an addition since uh, four and five as i said that used the eva we now have some rubber protecting the supercritical eva on the bottom uh, again it just adds to well i think it adds to the grip but with my one run that i've done so far uh, i'm not going to comment on that at the moment it feels decent when i'm walking around and it's just adding in the high wearing areas there is obviously some exposed midsole there on the bottom but overall it is covering the majority of the shoe uh, but it doesn't impact the weight whatsoever with it still coming in in my size under 300 grams which is absolutely amazing. So that is it for the tech. So with all that out of the way, how did I find the shoe? First impressions, first impressions, wow. This is absolutely what I was looking for. So why did I want to buy the Max 6? Well, in my rotation at the moment, there's just a bit of a void for lovely lightweight shoes without a plate, without some kind of plate in it. Now the Speed 4s come in, it's absolutely unbelievable. I love it, but we do have that nylon plate in there and I do like to try and run without plates as much as possible. Now I know in my marathon training series I've been doing a lot of my workouts in plated shoes that's been a choice that I've been making to try and save the legs I wonder if it's backfired with my recent Achilles uh, flare up with the Vaporfly 3s um, so I've definitely gone back and backed out of those it's fine now uh, there's no issues there but it did aggravate things um, so I wanted to have an addition to my Brooks Hyperion Max which is another non-plated uh, shoe and this has just absolutely ticked all of those boxes uh, the two great upgrades I think from version 4 to this one is the addition of stack height so we're now talking more cushion and then the foam being this single layer for me it works better um, I feel like I know I've only got one run in the shoe but I feel like I'm going to be able to run pretty darn quickly in this shoe I think I'm going to be able to do moderate runs in it easily uh, and long runs now the reason I've only done one run and I usually like to do an easy and a, a moderate run zone one and zone two is just because I've been poorly over the last week or so I picked this thing up and I got it out for its first run earlier last week and it's just been waiting for me to slot it into the rotation to run. I haven't run at all this week, uh, but I've just not taken it off my feet when I've been out walking. Uh, it is so darn comfortable. So that's the reason this is labeled as a first run and not a first impressions. I haven't quite built a full picture of it, but I'm really excited to build that full picture. Predictions at the moment is going to be that it's going to be extremely versatile. I do feel I'm going to be able to take this thing out for moderate runs. As I said, even go faster than that in the shoe, even up to tempo type runs. And for me, this is absolutely getting an outing for a long run as well. I have no doubt this thing is going to be magic out there uh, with time on feet too. And that'll be interesting to see how my feet... I mentioned the narrowness of the shoe. It's not too narrow. I have a wider foot, but my feet do sit on the edges of the material. I wonder if I'm out there for 90 plus minutes. My feet get hot, maybe swell a bit, whether there'll be any rubbing or pressure. I didn't have any issues with the Mac 4, and I remember that being quite a narrow shoe. So we'll see how that fares uh, over the longer distance. What I will say is, I do plan on posting a further update on the shoe over on my extra channel. So as always, I'll make sure I leave a link to that in the description below and I'll let you know more testing that I've done on it when I am back running and back feeling a bit better. Um, but yeah, I think the big positive for me, absolutely the weight under 300 grams. For me in my UK size 13, that's a bit of a magic number to get under that. Shoes that fall under that is usually the speed threes uh, and twos and ones. The four is slightly over. So for this to fall under it is 
is really good um, and it just means that it tends to be a shoe that can be super versatile. Brooks Hyperion Max, again, you guys know the love I have for that shoe. This is slightly softer than that shoe, but it's not super squishy. I'm not a fan of shoes that are really really soft sink bounce invincible type shoes with that type of midsole i've tried them i'm not a huge fan uh, i just find that it's i just sink too much i work too hard to get through the next stride it's it's not my cup of tea so i do prefer a uh, slightly firmer midsole and although this is softer it's not quite that marshmallowy squishy soft it's just that perfect balance in between so really early promising signs from the max 6 this is exciting this could be right now my favorite daily trainer that I've tested out this year. I've tested out some good shoes so far. The Endorphin Speed 4, the Pro 4, spring to mind, but this one has really got me excited. I might even label it and say this could be the most exciting shoe I've tested so far in 2024. In fact, I think it might be, but plenty more runs and plenty more testing to come. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Max 6. Have you picked this thing up yet? It's been out a couple of weeks now. I'd love to hear if you've managed to grab a pair and what your thoughts are. Have you done some good testing in it? Do drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Early thoughts for me though, this could be pretty darn good very happy with it very happy with my purchase managed to get 10 percent off through sportshoes.com uh, with my club discount so that ended up making the purchase price 126 pounds which made it even sweeter very very happy with that and yeah this could be a really good investment into my rotation and it could fill that void so i've got more options with non-plated shoes that can pick up the pace that's it from me today guys those are my thoughts on the max 6 after just one run plenty more to come as i said check out the extra channel there'll be more stuff appearing on there when i get back out in the shoot and i'll share some more thoughts over there in the meantime i'd love to hear from you down in the comments below and we'll leave it there for today if you enjoyed the video please do consider giving it a like share it with your friends and of course subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and i'll see you on the next one